Hey guys, Casey Foster here from netcodeguides.com doing a demo review here for Bajarn Bane on his DE Dust 2 matchmaking game. He's currently a DMG, or when he submit this demo for demo review, he was a DMG. Um, he tends to op a bit. I'm not sure if that's actually the right role for you based on some of the positioning that you take. Um, you tend to be in more of like a rifle position, but you have an op in your hand, so. Um, with that said, take that into consideration too, but with that said, we're going to get right into this demo. Um, so, you guys won pistol round the next two, you guys lost the first gun, you guys bought again. Um, you guys are here on the gun round, they've taken B, killed your B player, they killed the Carlos dude who peeked the window with an op. Um, you guys are in a three on four situation. This dude runs into the site here, and you hear him start to plant. Um, you, you, you delayed it a little too long and he gets the actual bomb down now if so this is obviously counter-strike is a very situational game but if you had a rifle in your hands not an op and you went in a little bit earlier and stopped the bomb plant i i, I know that was probably your goal but that little bit of time delayed plus you having an op in your hands should have stopped you from trying to pull this off um so basically the thought his thought process or the thought process for this concept here is to if you have a rifle in your hands something you can shoot at multiple people at the same time with you stop the plant you are in you've killed the dude obviously because you stopped the plant and then you potentially will get another kill on another player turning a three turning a 4v3 into a four a 3v2 um and having the bomb down and then potentially you may get trade fragged back um, and then you basically would be in a two-on-two -two situation and your teammates would basically be playing for the bomb plant again. I, I totally get the, the idea behind it, but the little bit of the delay you took allowed him to get the bomb down. And then you don't have really the best gun for the situation. So you'll see what happens here. You get the kill. Uh, you miss a few shots here and you try and pick up the dude's gun and you get trade fragged. You go one for one um, and they have the bomb down. So a little bit of the delay got you killed. Um, the next thing would probably have been to just be like, hey, you know, this is matchmaking. The communication with teammates probably is not going to be the best. So I'm just going to wait for my teammates to retake the site. That would have, you would have had much better results if you would have went that round. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but you have to factor in, you know, the risk reward kind of situation into every situation in Counter-Strike. And the risk there um, was much higher than the reward because of the gun that you had and the timing for... Um, stopping the bomb plant so keep that in consideration we're gonna jump into the next round all right so that this is uh, obviously an eco round and with eco rounds you're gonna have pistols guns that are not very good at long range and you're kind of want to get in the players faces I totally get it um, but the opper at T spawn shoots at you and you get into lower B and basically him shooting at you at you there ensures that he now knows your lower B and at that point, basically, as soon as he shoots, you have to run away um, unless you just sit in lower B and basically wait, the, wait for them to push. You kind of have to run away. Um, the reason that you do that, or the reason that you have to run away is because he knows you're there. Generally speaking, he's going to communicate it to his teammates and you're going to die. Um, like in any of our matches uh, or in like Pro CS, you'll see uh, somebody get into lower B. The two people in B, upper B tunnels will just push that guy and kill him because he's in such a like a, a dumb like lower B is a really good spot to be. It's a it's a you have a massive advantage there. So people will go and kill him. So basically, the dude that was T spawn with the op shot at you. He called you were there, and the dude's just gonna post at you. So it was kind of like a waste of death to be honest, especially on the eco round where your main goal is just to get some guns and break their economy a little bit, uh, potentially get a gun and fall back with that gun. Um, so the the, taking that fight right there really made it tough, um, you know, for you to contribute to that round. And, you know, in Counter-Strike, you want to be contributing to the round as much as possible, ultimately winning the round. It's Nico, so the chances of you winning the round are much less likely. So, anyway, keep that in consideration. Basically, if somebody gets that information as to where you're at, you know, you kind of have to juke them up a little bit and, you know, change your goal for that round. Um, and just fall back and contribute to the round, doing some damage, delaying them into sites, whatever it may be. All right, on to the next round. All right, so you guys strung a few rounds together there. You guys are in a three-on-one situation. You know where he's at. He has an op. You guys haven't pinched. You have a teammate outside long. He can't fall back long. 
um, you have a teammate CT spawn, and obviously you're A site and you have two flashes. Now, this is where not utilizing your equipment to your advantage came into play. Um, I, I don't know if, you know, people at that rank don't know that you kind of don't want to do this, but we're going to see what happens here and let this play out. So you throw a flash long. I don't know if you tried to communicate to the CT spawn player to peek with the flash or something, but you kind of just lobbed a flash and you didn't peek with it. Um, you know, you kind of just run to sight. Now you throw another flash. Obviously this is a bad flash and it flashes you and your teammate. Um, so it was basically another wasted flash and the CT spawn dude gets a kill or the dude gets a kill on the CT spawn player. You whiff the shot here um, and you die. Now the dude was in a three on one situation and obviously you guys won the round, but he was in a three on one situation. He knows in his head there's a minute left. I'm, it's very unlikely that I'm going to win this round, so I'm just going to sit around basically, or this is what he should have been thinking. Uh, I'm just going to sit around and wait for them to push me. I'm in a pretty good situation. I have a gun that I would like to save. If I don't die, it's great. If I do die, um, you know, I'll at least go down and try and take some of their guns. Um, so basically what happened was you threw the flash, didn't peek. You threw another flash. Obviously it blinded you. You might have had the intention of peeking with a second flash, um, but that's the ultimate problem. You don't really want to just waste flashes. Flashes do two things. Flashes flash the player to potentially kill people, and flashes will allow you to clear a spot and basically get information if somebody's there because they're you're hoping that they're going to be flashed. Um, obviously he was flashed on the first flashbang, but nobody peeked. So what I'm trying to get at is if you're going to throw the, if you're going to throw a flash, you're going to want to have somebody or yourself in some kind of situation or position to get the information and get the kill or peek and basically find out where he's at. Um, if he's pushed up long, if he's at the corner, if he's just staring at a wall, if whatever he's doing, um, you want to do something off of it. You basically just don't want to waste flashes. Um, so that's a really important thing, and that applies Counter-Strike wide, map wide, position wide, everywhere in the game. All right, on to the next round. All right, so we're now here on a I guess like a half buy, and this is the main key that I want to talk about right here. Um, it's it it it's clearing spots. Uh, you ran up cat with the P90. The dude wasn't prepared. He had a pistol. You got an easy kill. You really weren't prepared for him being there either because you had to react to where he was. Um, and this wide peak right here um, is what I want to talk about, clearing spots. So you kind of just ran up cat, you got the kill, and then you ran straight past these bricks here. And now look, you're exposed to a guy in A site. There's a guy at long A. There potentially could have been a guy here in elevator. There could have potentially been a guy over here. There could have been a guy on the right side of these bricks. There could have been a guy right here on ramp. There could have been a guy standing on the, the box looking at Cat. And you kind of just wide peeked. And now you're exposing yourself to all of these positions at the same time. Um, what I would like to see you do when coming up into these kind of positions in every spot, in every map there is, is clearing spots. You know, coming, coming up Cat. And let me slow this down real slow and then show it in basically third point. You're going to die, obviously. Um, showing what I would like to see you have come up and done. So basically, you come up, you know, cat like this, and you know, peek, peek these yep, these uh, barrels, and then straight peek out a little bit and clear um, goose, and then peek out a little bit more and clear over the top of the box, peek out a little bit more and clear uh, elevator and that spot that that CT is in on ramp at the same time, then peek the corner and then peek CT spawn. So basically, you would not be, you would not. Uh, expose yourself to all of these positions at the same time. Oh, you actually don't do that, but you get get damaged pretty well. They should have killed you. Um, and you would not have been exposing yourself to all these positions at the same time, and you potentially would have killed the guys. Um, they wouldn't have done all this damage to you. Obviously, it's an eco round. You guys still win the round, but the same thing happens a lot. Um, I think there's one more round later on in this in this match where you kind of just go up cat, and we'll you'll basically see it happen in real time again. So just want to talk a little bit about that and apply that to your game everywhere on every map if you get used to clearing spots and you have a method to it you will be much 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 more successful in every in every aspect of counter-strike you'll have a much more fun and much more fun in the game because you're not going to be getting surprised and dying to people that you don't know where they're at so apply that to your game and we're going to jump into the next round all right now we're here on another gun round and you've done this a few times it 
hasn't penalized you really, but it's not good practice. Um, you see yourself just kind of run here to the top of mid and you're standing still and you just lob a smoke down middle and you kind of stare at it and let it pop and then you move. Um, that's that's not good practice. It's never a good idea to just stand in this stand still, throw a smoke. It's not good practice to stand still, throw a smoke and watch it. It's not good practice to stand out in the middle of the open and throw a smoke. Um, you'll hear a lot of casters of pro matches or pros talking about knowing smokes. They're like, oh, I know a smoke for that, or I'm going to smoke this. And pretty much 99% of the time when they're throwing these smokes, they go to a spot and they line their crosshair up on some pixel or some line or some angle or some corner, and they're exposed. I mean, they're they're not exposed to the elements, not exposed to the bad guys. They can't get naded. Uh, they can't be shot at while they're lining up these smokes because it may take a second or two for them to do it. And they pretty much know a smoke for every spot on every map, you know, of their plays and the strategies that they're going to do. Um, the reason they do that is so you're not exposed to the elements. Nobody can shoot you. If that dude would have peaked mid right there, you would have been a free frag because you watched the smoke go down mid. You were standing out in the open to throw it. Um, a whole bunch of, you know, things basically weren't um, I in an ideal situation there. And it's, it's, it's something you can learn very easily. We have smokes for every spot on the map. Uh, that's a big thing in a neck a big thing of neck a big part of netcode premium where a lot of smokes and flashes and mollies and grenades and basically set ones that show you where to line up your crosshair or whatever um, you're going to line it up with to, th to throw these um, grenades so that's something you're going to want to work on um, definitely don't standing out in the open um, to throw it you know bank, bank it off a wall you know throw it and run back behind your cover whatever it is um, you know whatever it may be you want to do that uh, just don't don't repeat what you just did, um, and you're actually going to go up cat here, and this is is what I'm going to is is what I was talking about, um, where you go up cat and you kind of don't clear things, um, like I mentioned in the earlier part in this video, and you'll see it here. Uh, you actually do get penalized for it uh, pretty badly. So you saw, you're seeing the guy jumping, and then you kind of just run up cat, and you get free fragged. Um, free frag meaning you you didn't really. Uh, didn't really shoot back at him you didn't really contest him at all you kind of just ran up and he got a pick and you died um, there was no trade happening nothing but ultimately that happened because you didn't clear cat well um, if you would have come to this like this is how I clear cat when I'm coming up cat um, you know I'll kind of shoulder peek this guy right here uh, that could be potentially standing behind stairs and then I'll peek out a little wider if there's somebody on this wall and then you know I'll come to the left side and then right peek this guy that could be behind the stairs and then right peek the guy that could be behind the bricks there and then you wide peek out to see if anybody's standing up top or on the left and then you kind of just jump a little bit and you can see below these bricks or around these bricks if there's somebody playing behind them um, and once you've cleared that then you can go up the ramp and that takes all of like two seconds you know it's it's not much faster or sorry not much slower than what you did it just ensures that you're going to not die to that dude there so you know having having a method you know or a, like an elimination process basically process of elimination eliminating the possibility of people being spots and then going up uh, is going to just increase your game dramatically you're going to get all of those kills you're not going to be surprised by these people anymore it's going to look cooler you know people are going to be like oh shit this dude's good um, and ultimately you will have a better time playing cs because you're not going to be dying and you're not going to be getting surprised by those players okay and you guys are here on a bit of a half buy and your teammate throws this smoke right right there. Now, obviously, this is a lower tier matchmaking game. And a lot of people don't understand how smokes work and don't understand, you know, choke points. He has just thrown a CT-sided smoke. CT-sided meaning that is a smoke that a CT would throw to put his team in an advantage. Now, he just blocked you guys off from taking the site. Obviously, he doesn't really know. And then you basically throw the same exact smoke and then you throw a flash through it and you turn from the flash and you run to the site and you're basically just coming out of the smoke and this dude kills you from window. Now, you have to know as a Counter-Strike player which smokes give you advantages, where you have the advantage and where you have the disadvantage in the game. And I actually make a video about that exact play, smoking tunnel or basically throwing a smoke from tunnel and then throwing a flash and taking B. I can take B single, like by myself a lot. Um, you know, versus pretty much any setup with this one play. Uh, there's a video about it on the website. Um, it's really easy to do and it's really, really, really effective. And if you would have watched that video, you would have thrown basically that smoke and you guys would have potentially won that round because what it does is it blocks off the rest of the site. You guys had AKs and Tech 9s. 
and an SMG. And that basically is smoke is going to put a wall between you and the opera who's far away. And you're going to be able to get in his face and kill him. Um, <clears throat> and you have to know as a CS player, you have to know that the, that smoke that you just threw is an advantage for the CT and to just not run through it. So you guys lost that round because you guys put yourself in a disadvantage and got yourself killed. So check that video out on the site. Um, and you'll you'll understand that part and have uh, a, an understanding of how to basically use smokes to your advantage to create walls between you and the bad guys and use your guns to your advantages because it's pistols and you guys need to get in their face and they have ops so they can they can shoot at you from far away we're gonna jump into the next round all right so here we are um, you're opping mid you did the you, you opt mid the round before and this guy in mid picked you with the op and you're kind of doing the same play. You're like challenging this guy again. And look where your crosshair was at. Your crosshair was, your crosshair was right here. And you were just standing there. And then this dude slowly peeks out from the right side of the doors. And then now you have to bring your crosshair back to where he's at. There's no reason to have your crosshair right here because they can't be there. They can only be right there. You may, you may spam them through the door when they crossed, but the point of them crossing is over. Like that was like two seconds ago. You need to have had your crosshair right here. If you would have had your crosshair in the right crosshair placement, you would have killed this guy very easily because he walked into your crosshair and he gets the kill. So he did the same thing twice in a row. He, he, he picked you twice in mid. Um, th this, is a, this is a part of Counter-Strike that a lot of people don't really put too much effort or thought into. And the idea of it is to never make the same mistake twice and to learn from your mistakes. Steel actually made a very in-depth video about this. You can check that out. Um, he talks about never making the same mistake twice, learning from your mistakes. And if you're not learning from your mistakes, you're wasting your time in Counter-Strike. Um, so basically, I want to explain what you could have done differently in that situation. So as the CT in that situation, he killed you mid the round before. He's like, all right, this dude likes to be standing right in the middle of team mid. And I'm going to peek that same exact spot because he likes to play there. And that's why you died, because he knew where you were going to be standing and he killed you. So as you or in your shoes, what you should have done is been in a different position, been on the right side of the ramp or the left side of the ramp and crouching or standing behind the wall a little bit, hiding half of your body, basically doing something different to increase your chances of you not dying. Doing something um, different, it, it's going to give, it's going to put him on the guessing side of the thing. He's going to say, okay, this guy was mid last time. Uh, he's probably going to be there. Now, if you're somewhere different, he's going to put his crosser in the middle, and then you're going to be on the right side, and you're going to get the kill this time. Um, there's this, there's this, there's this uh, a thing that I lot of see a lot of I see a lot of people do. They will play Counter Strike and they'll do the same things over and over and over again, beating their head against this wall, doing the same things, and they're dying the same way, and they're expecting different results. That's actually like the definition of insanity. I'm not saying that's what was happening there, but you can't do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Um, I would have liked to have seen you, you know, do something different, stand on the right side, stand on the left side, maybe not even take that fight. Maybe that dude is simply better than you at picking mid and you don't want to take that fight with that guy. If he's better than you, you know, at that, at that position, put yourself in a spot where you're more comfortable, where you've gotten a lot of kills before, maybe where you have even have the advantage, um, you know, try and just do something different. So that's ultimately like a big philosophy to CS that applies everywhere throughout every map you know in every position you know just try and do something different if one thing's not working stop doing it try something different um anyway so to recap this video just want to talk about um you know clearing spots you know you need to have methods for clearing spots in the map um you need to check corners you need to have methods when going up cat you know clearing angles things like that um you need to utilize flashbangs in your equipment better um there was that situation where you threw the flash at long, you didn't peek with it twice. Um, you know, you have to be using them to get information. Um, you have to take that gamble throwing the flash. You know, there's a potential he may turn from the flash and he may kill you, but you have to take that gamble um, and or just throw a good flash and you are going to ensure that he's going to be flashed. Um, you know, understand when choke points are smoked out that you just don't run through them. You're not going to be very successful with that. Um, and if they are smoked out, you know, use them to your advantage throw a smoke past it and basically uh eliminate their smoke by throwing a deeper smoke obviously you're still running a risk of running through that smoke um their initial sorry your t side that dude on your team that threw that close smoke running through that smoke is is just not a good idea but if that's what you guys want to do you know at least give yourself a chance by throwing a deep smoke and throwing a flash to it or something 
Um, and the third thing is, you know, just ultimately learning from mistakes, you know, try not to make the same mistake twice. It sounds much easier than it actually is. But if you have this in, uh, in your, in, you know, if you have think about this consciously all the time while you're playing CS, you're going to improve much faster. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this demo review. Again, this was Casey Foster of netcodeguides.com and look out for more demo reviews in the future. Thanks guys.